Okay, what we're doing here is we're actually showing uh, we built a RAID 5 array and we're on E Drive. Let's go take a look at my computer and you can actually see that. I'll zoom in here so you can see that a little bit better. So you can actually see the different drives. And what I have is a C and an E. Now E is a RAID 5 array done by the PERC hardware controller. And when we open it up, you can see on E Drive, we've actually uh, put a number of files on there. So you can see the various files. You can zoom in there and, and actually take a look at the different folders and files. And of course, my, my camera is struggling to focus on that, so I'm going to back it up just a little bit. Okay, so here, here we've got uh, the folders and files on that RAID array that we just copied and pasted over there. So you can kind of see what's going on. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to, um, the way that RAID 5 works is that it should provide redundancy should any one hard drive fail. So if you take a look over here, you can see the various uh, hard drives. Let me back this up just a little. Oops, sorry, the other way. This is the inside of the uh, Dell uh, uh, Power Edge. And you can see the various uh, hard drives in here. Uh, there's three SCSI hard drives. It's hard to see in there, but um, as, actually as we focus in, try to focus in, there's actually three SCSI hard drives in here. You can see this is the power connector for one, the power connector for the other, and down in the dark area is the third one. And they're all uh, connected via SCSI. This is the SCSI Terminator right here, this large black item right here. And what we want to do is we want to simulate the death of one hard drive. So we're going to do that by shutting it down, unplugging the, the actual 68-pin uh, connector, and booting it back up. Now, if RAID 5 works, what it should do is continue working even with a missing drive. That's the whole idea of redundancy. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna shut it down, unplug one, and then uh, boot it back up, and we should see all of our data still working the way that RAID works. So we're gonna first shut it down. And bring the server down. And you can hear it shut off. And you kind of watch here, and we're going to very gently remove, and we've got this, this pull tab here, very gently remove the data cable. And this is also the terminator for the SCSI chain, called an active termination. And we're going to just literally take one hard drive out of the picture. So we're going to come back here, we're going to boot the hard drive up, we're going to go directly into Windows, so let's come back here, let's put it back up here. Now, the RAID controller will immediately see a problem with the RAID array, but because of the way that redundancy works, it will actually use part of the parity stripe on the other two drives. It will calculate the missing drive. So we should see Windows boot up, our E drive still working just fine. So we're watching the Dell boot up. This is the bias information. Here's the SCSI controller. This is the various firmware that come up onto the screen. So this is the control A to go into the SCSI controller, but we don't have anything hooked up to the SCSI controller. What we are is we are using the SCSI system on the RAID controller, so don't get that confused. Now we're in the RAID. The RAID controller should detect a problem. Notice it's scanning the SCSI bus on the RAID controller and it does find some issues. We're going to hit any other key to continue to go ahead and boot into Windows. It does say there's issues. Let 
Now, if the rate controller should pick up with a missing drive and be calculating and making the rate array look as if nothing was wrong to Windows. All right, Windows is now booting up. All right. Password. It recognizes an unexpected shutdown, which Mr. V just lit up. All right, so there's our Windows environment. Let me make sure. Come on down there, cameraman. So here's my computer. And notice we have a drive E. And everything looks just fine. So drive E looks just great. But notice... See the cable? The cable is dangling. Drive E, or the, dri the RAID array, is broken. But the RAID controller does the magic. So this is how RAID works. We have one disk that's not even working at all. And yet, as far as Windows is concerned, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the RAID array. That is how RAID works. So let's go ahead and shut down and do the rebuild. So you can see how, let's say this was a defective hard drive. Uh, let's say this was a defective hard drive. We're going to pull the bad one out, put a new one in, and show you how to rebuild the array. Okay, we're going to boot up our RAID. Now we've replaced the hard drive, or in this case, we've uh, reattached the connector, simulating replacing the drive. We're going to boot into the RAID array. We're going to receive the motherboard bias video flag come up. We're going to see the SCSI controller, which we have nothing hooked up to the onboard SCSI. We're going to move to, instead, the RAID controller, which is coming next. And now we're going to do a control M. We're going to go in the RAID controller, use the software that's in the firmware of that controller to rebuild our array because we jerked a connection out. So we're going to rebuild the array. And upon rebuilding that array, so notice the it, it recognizes right away. Yeah, go ahead, cameraman. Uh, notice it recognizes right away that we have a failed hard drive. So we've got to rebuild that. So uh, we're going to select the failed drive. And we are going to do an F10 to rebuild. Go ahead and show them the menu down here at the bottom. You can see the menu. So we're going to hit an F10 to rebuild. And we're going to say yes, we're going to rebuild. And James, how long did this take? 45 minutes to an uh, hour. Okay, it's going to take 45 minutes to an hour to rebuild the array. It's got to put all that information back on that hard drive that was missing. So in 45 to some minutes, it's going to be good. So we're going to pause and let it do its thing and rebuild the array. Okay, let's delete the whole